Okay, so thanks very much everyone for joining us tonight. Um, I'm very glad to say we're joined by Tom Coleman and I suppose i just let you all know myself and Tom go back a long way. We went to college uh, a long time ago together. Um, so I know he may look older than, than me, but we're, we're, uh, we went to college together. <laughs> so um, I'm going to hand it over to Tom. Um, we're talking about sleep performance tonight. I suppose it's a really big area that I suppose it's underutilized within GA and especially down the levels. Top teams would be fairly reliant on it and would be fairly up to date on it. But um, for a lot of coaches working with teams, it's probably something that you could take back. So Tom, um, we want to intro. Thanks very much for joining us. Can you no give problem. a background on yourself? My pleasure. Uh, thanks very much for having me. Um, good to see you again, Colm. Um, yeah, we won't talk about the college stuff. I was known as the old man back then, so there we go. Um, just to give you all a little bit of background about myself. So, um, I, I always had a huge interest in, in nutrition and um, I was always in sport as well. And about eight or nine years ago, I set up a business looking primarily at what athletes are doing. Uh, when they finish training and that kind of time frame between they finish training and when they're coming back into training again and what they're doing really is eating and resting so um, how can we accelerate recovery I suppose was, was kind of one of my questions and um, so in, in from eight or nine years ago looking at that I started to look at everything you know as I said and one of the things that really jumped out or, or came out straight away was was the impact that sleep had so that's really piqued my interest and that's where I started working um, and I've worked there ever since. I do a lot of corporate work now. I do a lot of, I still work in um, sort of high level sport with, with athletes um, individually uh, when I can. Um, I was involved in research last year on sleep as well and it was a paper published. Uh, I was on the expert panel. So I suppose, look, um, just to give you again a quick few people I've worked with. Um, I've worked with a lot of corporate clients on um, sleep. This would be related to shift workers looking at shift patterns and things like that. Um, on Garda Shea um, I've worked, I'm actually working with them now on looking at their, some of their shift patterns and what they can do in terms of uh, like reducing fatigue, optimizing their nutrition, looking after their health and all that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of sport, I've, you know, once I got into this and started investigating, I was asked then to speak, I was asked to work with uh, IRUCA, which is Irish Rugby Union Players Association. And I was sent around to all of the provinces and I got to work with the academy players and the senior players. Um, then out of that, I actually got to work then individually with Jamie Heaslip for about three months. So I was actually monitoring Jamie's sleep and mental fatigue levels. Um, I'm aware that uh, who I'm speaking to, so I was, I, was, I was down in Munster Academy as well. Didn't know anything about rugby and this guy walked in and, and, and nearly started asking me 120 questions, Peter O'Mahony, and um, an interesting character. But I, I, um, I suppose I, I hope I helped those guys um, realize the impact that sleep was having on their ability to recover in every sense of the word. Um, I've worked with county teams in GEA as well. Um, that's all uh, settled down now uh, for the moment. Um, but, you know, let's, I suppose, what can we do now to, to, to be prepared and ready for when it does kick off again? Um, Irish hockey, I've worked with a few of those girls, again, individually. Um, Irish league players, and then bottom right, if you can see my screen, I presume you can all see my screen, um, is Trinity College Elite Athletes Programme. So we, we advise those guys on aspects of nutrition and sort of dovetailing, you know, sleep in with nutrition. And they're all inter very much interrelated. So, um, and then I suppose famously, or rather infamously, I got to work with Conor McGregor. I don't know if you can see the screen there in the bottom right, right in the background. <laughs> that was my moment of, 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 of fame uh, when I appeared on his Instagram account and Twitter and all that crack. Um, but I got to uh, work with Conor for about three months prior to the Mayweather fight. So I was in the camp, I was pulled into the camp because I worked with his coach, John. So what? why is sleep important for Conor? Well, I mean, I had to firstly uh, impart that to Conor and kind of let him know that, you know, what the lack of sleep. If you see the wristbands that both of us are wearing there in the picture, I was I, I was monitoring his mental fatigue levels. And that, this was technology that I was given, or I, I brought in from the US, which, which was designed by the US military for fighter pilots. So it gave me a reading 
uh, gave me a score out of 100 for mental fatigue. And we know that mental fatigue impacts on reaction time. So I knew what Connor's reaction time was going to be before he stepped into the ring. Um, much to his amazement, I could predict what his reaction time was going to be when I would test it. Um, the only thing to bring that up would be sleep and rest, you know. Um, so yeah, working with Connor was interesting to say the least. And Julian Dalby, who's his performance doctor, um, so he looks after all that kind of end of things. I mean, Connor had a team of about twenty-five guys for every training session. Um, okay, so I, I'm going to delve into sleep. I'm going to give you just an overview. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about sort of just very generally first. Then I'm going to delve into sleep and how it works. It's important that you get a grasp on how it works because you can utilize this information to help you, right? Um, and then we kind of look at the relationship of sleep in terms of performance and recovery and exactly the different ways in which it can uh, influence. Again, if you have questions, put them into column and we'll deal with them. Um, sleep is hugely important. It is regarded as one of the three pillars of um, health, uh, let alone anything else. So. Um, Harvard tell us that it, it has just as much of an impact on your ability to recover uh, as what you eat every day, and that's that's that should really reframe the importance of it when it's when it's when it's equally important, according to these guys. So I'm going to delve into sleep and circadian rhythm. Circadian rhythm, guys, is your is your body clock. Okay, so um, we have different processes that happen in the body at different times. Like some athletes even use this to decide on when is the best time to do strength training, when is the best time to do kind of speed work or coordination, when is the best time to learn about tactics or to, you know, so you can even sort of make adjustments in that for various reasons. You know, you have different levels of testosterone at different levels and uh, different times of the day um, and things like that. So that's, you know, that's what circadian rhythm is. So. Again, what I might do with this stuff is I might actually send in a lot of this in note format so you guys can kind of go back over and kind of look at it and see where it's at. Um, I mentioned one or two things here, testosterone. So your testosterone level is actually peaked in the morning time because you produce testosterone at night when you're asleep. Um, if you're missing out on sleep, you're missing out on testosterone. And we all know the impact that testosterone has on things like muscle building, um, and things like that, so hugely important. Um, how much sleep should you be getting? Um, it, it varies, it varies through the lifespan. Elite athletes tend to get more, okay, because elite athletes tend to push themselves to the absolute maximum. That's what you're looking for the edge, you're looking for the envelope, you're looking for like, what, how far can I push this system, these systems together, right? Um, so when you push it that far, there's more of a requirement to recover, really. So I know that when when athletes like Roger Federer, you know, uh, Jokovic, tennis spirit, like these guys absolutely are militant about their sleep regime because they realize the impact it has. And they would get nine hours, 10 hours a night because it's a competitive advantage, essentially. Children require more sleep um, as as we go on and like teenagers require more sleep um, adults the recommendation is seven and a half eight hours a night seven to eight hours generally right why is it that amount of time specifically um, it is that amount of time because when you sleep when we all sleep we sleep in blocks of 90 minutes okay so we sleep in so call them cycles so sleep cycles so you should be getting five sleep cycles a night which is five 90 minutes equals seven and a half hours okay how many of you are getting to, to seven and a half to eight hours? Maybe not all of you, or maybe some of you are, I hope. Um, so we can kind of we can kind of utilize this kind of sleep block information. We actually call it sleep wake cycles. So you you kind of might wake up at the end of a, a sleep a 90 minute block and fall back asleep again. And that's that's a natural part of sleep. It's fine to wake up and, and fall back asleep again. Um, so just looking at what happens in one of those 90 minute blocks, right? So there's actually what I call them four stages now of sleep. So you start off in stage one, which is a very light stage of sleep. You kind of drift off into sleep. Hope you're all awake for this talk. So <laughs> hope none of you are in stage one sleep now. So stage one is light. Then you start to fall deeper into sleep. That's stage two. And then what happens is your core body temperature drops 
and this causes a rise in melatonin. You might have heard of melatonin, it's a sleep neurotransmitter, it's, one of, it's a powerful sleep neurotransmitter, right? and that pushes you then into the deepest part of your sleep, which is stage four, stage three, four sleep. Um, and then you come up and you dream, and, and, and your dream phase is a light phase of sleep, okay? And that's one 90 minute cycle. So you have deep phases and light phases. I'm sure some of you have set the alarm and you, the alarm has gone off and you feel like you're in a very deep sleep and you feel like hell and it takes you a long time to wake up. Maybe inadvertently you've set your alarm for the deepest part of your sleep. So this is why we use this 90 minute block informa information to take control of and plan our sleep. Okay. Um, Again, I'll pass that in. You can actually delve into that, the graphics there about actually what happens to the, the, the heart rate and the muscular system and the blood pressure and all that type of stuff in the different stages. You know, I don't need to go through that with you, but I, I will send it on because it is kind of interesting, right? So this is what your sleep pattern might look like over the course of the night. If you notice from the diagram, the first two deep phases are the deepest aspect. Um, it's the, th those are when you probably get a lot of the most physical restoration right as the night progresses our sleep gets lighter now our sleep gets lighter for various reasons one of the reasons is that for each cycle you dream more so your the first cycle you might dream for 5 10 15 minutes your second cycle might be half an hour your third cycle so in dream phase it's lighter okay the, another reason is testosterone as you sleep your brain secretes testosterone um, and so that starts to wake you up. Um, what sleep is essentially is because scientists actually still struggle to find out exactly why we need to sleep, right? But what sleep essentially is, is it's an investment. It's a biological investment. We are, we, some creatures are nocturnal, meaning they get up at night, they hunt, they gather or whatever. We're the other way around, we're diurnal, okay? Which means that we, we are awake during the day to protect our families, to eat food, to reproduce, to, to, to stay alive, right? And then at night we sleep, um, and these are control mechanisms, and the sleep is important for growth, repair, maintenance, immune function, and reorganization of what's happened during the day and processing of what's happening during the day. So it's hugely kind of important. So kind of looking at, Actually, I just go back a couple of slides because I mentioned this, the, the physical repair that happens in the first uh, two phases of sleep. Um, that happens because that's when your brain secretes growth hormone. So your brain secretes growth hormone, most of it, the vast majority is secreted during those first two phases. Um, and for athletes who want to maximize uh, muscle growth and muscle recovery, maybe you should consider looking at a slow absorbing protein to coincide with growth hormone being secreted. In that way, you're kind of, you're, you're giving your body a really good chance to, 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 to gain muscle, right? Um, a lot of the psychological repairs that happen, happen in the latter phases. Um, so people who miss out on the latter phases are impacted in a psychological sense, you know, and I'll, I'll go through some of those. Um, just before you go on there, uh, you mentioned the uh, slow releasing protein. What, like, what kind of would be an, a normal enough one that you'd recommend? Casein, casein protein. Okay, but talk to break it down. What's 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 in casein protein, or is it a case of uh, or what, what what food would be? Okay, so like you're looking like you, can, you can you can you can buy casein protein. It's like way is way is, is is generally what guys go for because it's very it's very fast. It's obviously, yeah. it's hitting the bloodstream in twenty minutes. Whereas casein protein, again, you can get them on um, often nutrition. Casein is a dairy protein. Okay, okay. so it's, it's casein is like protein in milk products essentially, right? Okay. And it's very slow absorbing, which means it takes time to get into the muscle to, for the body to break it down to to its uh, essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. So the types of like the, the highest. Um, foods in casein are going to be dairy foods and the highest in dairy foods is going to be cottage cheese now maybe people don't like cottage cheese and that's cool and um, you know but it's very easy to, to get a tub of casein protein it's like there's a lot of it what i would say about supplements guys 
go for a go for a good brand okay because i've read reports that have batch tested uh, independent studies like independent you know uh and i've had to pay for this i've had to pay for this you know and the, the top brands will have the purity levels are very high whereas the lower brands purity levels are horrible okay okay and um, so that specifically no like after a training session or after a match that would be after a training session, definitely after recommend now i'm going to tell you this about about post anabolic window because you're talking about post anabolic window there in terms of you know this thing of um you have to have a protein shake immediately after your train or inside the first hour or two hours right in all the research that i read this is not you know the most important number of guys when it comes to protein is the amount of grams per kilogram per day your overall number if you eat that protein in three goes five goes or one go it won't make a difference okay what i would say to you is more important is um, getting some carbohydrates well you always want to mix three generally for athletes it's three to one three parts carbohydrate one part protein when you finish training right so like when you finish training, a few things are happening. You're, what, you're, what you're going to do is the, the way protein shake that you're encouraged to have, that won't build any muscle, right? Absolutely not. What it will do is it will stop muscle breakdown that you've done while you've trained. Muscle breakdown continues after you've stopped training. So what the, what the way protein does is it stops that. Any form of recovery won't even happen unless you have IGF-1 in your bloodstream, incident growth factor 1, which means you need carbohydrate for the recovery to start. Okay, so for you lads, what you need to do is, yes, have the protein, have the carbohydrate, or have some, get something into you. Because the minute you start getting stuff into you, you're, you're starting that recovery process. Okay, so although the post-anabolic window or that, you have to have the protein shake or you lose them up that's nonsense it was created by supplement companies but what i what i would say to you is this generally speaking get you go from uh, solids to liquids going in and then you go you go you come back have some liquid have some fruit banana or something like that and then you're you're able to stomach the food right and then that trigger that starts to trigger all the different uh, recovery processes in the different systems and just the last one on the case in time um like age group, how, like is it? Would it be like do do teenagers need supplements, or should they be getting it naturally? Yes, should they, they get enough of it? They don't necessarily need like supplements have their place, but it's. I think people. You're you're not if you read any supplement, you're going to be like, oh god, I need this. This is great. Like yeah. you know, we we very clearly understand how much protein you need very clearly like for, for decades like the australian institute of sport like the american college of sports medicine like all of these institutes have very clear guidelines like and they are from 0.8 grams of per kilogram per day to at the very very top end to 2.2 grams of protein per kilogram per day now um you know that, that this this protein in, in 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 a lot of your food that you may not be aware of like a bowl of porridge has eight grams of protein okay. the porridge is primarily associated as a carbohydrate you should be getting all of us should be getting vast majority of our protein from our food okay. okay there's no harm there's no harm in um younger guys having a protein shake but one of the big mistakes that athletes make is they over consume protein they okay. over consume it okay they're just swamp and they're eating chicken breast left right and center now if you start doing that with food or supplement you're going to risk um damage okay you've got to risk you know it's it's, it's it doesn't make any sense one of the questions that steve red i think it's steve redgrave the, the olympic roar he won you know the five gold medals that he's famous for in performances is is does it make the boat go faster like everything in in in, in performance and recovery and sport why are you doing it? It has to, it is questioned. Why are you doing it? Will it make the boat go faster? Will it make me train better? Will it maybe uh, perform better? Will it make me, you know, so that, like everything in nutrition, sleep, all that stuff, that has to be questioned. Um, does that make sense? Yeah, just, just like for a recommendation. So let's say an average 15, 16 year old. Like an average 15. Pint, pint, pint of milk, should that be sufficient? Additional yeah, point of milk, you're, you're getting, need to be getting. They should shouldn't need to be, be taken. Yeah, 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 shouldn't need to be taken. Once they've a normal diet, like yeah, absolutely, and that's what any any solid professional will tell you as well. Okay, okay, perfect. Sorry about that. What? Right. So, 
now we're looking at sleep, okay? Um, so how does it fit in? It fits in because it's your optimum recovery time, really. Like, look at all the other areas in the screen there, nutrition, mental preparedness, strength and conditioning, hydration, and, and like we've a lot of evidence-based science. So we know the kind of percentages that we get from all these different things. Um, sleep is huge. Sleep is, I can't sort of overemphasize sleep. Um, so how does it affect your performance? Well, first off, um, your body composition. Um, you know, if you're, if you're not getting enough sleep, one of the things that happens is cortisol levels go up. So your cortisol is known as the stress hormone, and that will encourage your body to store energy as fat. Okay, so that will obviously have a negative impact on your on your um, on your weight. Decision making, motivation, accuracy, the ability to recover, stamina, reaction time, all impacted from sleep. I I look into a few of them. Accuracy, shock, shot accuracy. So there's a number of studies out there which look at the amount of hours that an athlete has slept versus how accurate they are versus how um, fast they are, or whatever else. This is one that was done, famous one that was done with collegiate basketball players. So they took the same group of athletes and they gave them six hours of sleep one night and they gave them eight hours of sleep another night and they got them to do like a hundred free throws, a hundred three points. You know, it like, it wasn't just like um, you know a few shots or whatever else. Like they, they really you know they really got them to work, and there was um, there was a distinctive kind of difference between both groups. If we look like in studies, we talk about significance. Was there a significant difference? And there was. We're talking about about nine percent here in shot accuracy. Like, are you going to give a guy nine percent? Like, what's that in, in a game? It's, that's huge lads that's people talk about the one percent this is we're talking about nine percent here we're talking about nine percent so if you if if guys have missed out on sleep uh for two nights before two or three nights before a game and they're they're, they're mentally fatigued shot accuracy is going to suffer like and that's that's going to cost games like you you think of it this way you know you you could have you could be taking you could have all your nutrition correct you could have done all the training your skills all that could, all that stuff could be lined up but if you if you're up half the night on Instagram or whatever, or your text or whatever, and you're not getting to sleep, then that's all that other stuff is is nearly to waste. So be mindful. This was a, a comparison of reaction times on goalkeepers. So again, you know, no place to hide because this stuff is exceptionally accurate at measurement, and there was a twenty percent difference from one uh, one to another in terms of reaction time. So huge. Um, NASA. So NASA monitor all their pilots and, and, and all that type of stuff with, with sleep, and they, they've done studies on it. Um, in terms of naps, they come up with this thing of 26 minutes is the optimum time to nap. I got to work with this tech from, from the US military, right? And it gave, me, um, it gave me a score for reaction time, and I knew that once it dropped below a certain level, that it was the equivalent of, uh, they compared it to a blood alcohol level. So I knew what a guy, if his if his fatigue level was below seventy, it was like him having a couple of beers, going out trying to play a game. Like it was just mental. So, you know, as I said, very very powerful stuff. And um, with sleep, we reset our memory, reduce metabolic demand in our brain, and stay alert. Nothing is more fundamental than that. So again, massive impact. And um, I just want to sort of finish up on this aspect talking going through a few different things with you guys one of the key roles that say protein has um whey protein is that it, it really helps with your immune function and your immune system and it helps with, with stopping getting you sick and this is, there's a lot of you know uh, research behind this but the supplement companies won't tell you this right but they all say it's for gaining muscle right but immune immunity so like we know that like athletes are more likely to get injured. This guy called Yann Lamar, I think Colin, you might know him. He's um, he looked at a lot of science on this, and he talks about he looked at players over the course of two years, and he looked at guys getting you know five, six, seven, eight hours sleep, and who who got the most injuries and who got the least injuries. So the guys getting the mo you know getting the eight hours were, were, were getting the least amount of injuries, and they were sick the least amount of time. It's all great talking about sickness now in these times, you know, um. When you when you fall asleep, your immune system wakes up. Simple as that. Um, adaptions occur. 
So you build the neural networks and pathways in your brain. You build the, the neural le- the, the the networks in your body as well. You wire yourself um, when you're asleep. Hormones. Again, I've talked about um, cortisol. I talk about what regulates your hunger. Uh, ghrelin and leptin. So ghrelin tells you you're hungry. Leptin tells you to stop eating. So if you're sleep deprived, your ghrelin levels go up. So that means you're going to get you're going to be hungrier and what the ghrelin essentially does is it tells you to eat Mars bars, right? Um, it makes you crave sugar and leptin goes down. So your hunger regulation goes out the window when you're, you're cranky, you feel like you feel terrible. So, you know, that's, that's huge. Testosterone. If you get less than five hours sleep, two nights in a row, your testosterone levels are, are fall off a cliff. Your testosterone levels end up at somebody 10 years older. Okay, so huge, huge impact. I would say 75% of muscle and tissue repair happen at night. Okay, let that sink in. 75% of muscle and tissue repair happen when you're sleeping. So massive gains. From a psychological point of view, reaction time, decision making. Now there's two types of, actually there's two types of reaction times, right? You can look this up. The first time is like a kind of instantaneous reaction time. So it's just like this, you know, it's, it's like a binary uh, choice. But you have, a section, you have a second kind of reaction, which is where does the decision involve? Should I pass? Should I go? Should I shoot? Both of those reactions are negatively impacted from uh, sleep. Okay. Also, what's important for athletes is to understand what they're doing on the page and take in information. And this ability also is impacted from a lack of sleep. That was actually, that was a study done on um, muscle gain and deep phases of sleep. Okay, so let's let's talk about how we can control this because if, if, if people can't sleep, if people have difficulty sleeping, right? It generally falls into about four, there's four different reasons, essentially. The first group I put into all of these, which are the physical components of sleep in, sport lads we we, what we do is we say we look at the controllables we look at what can we control there's no point in wasting time or energy on things that we can't control so the good news is all of these things we can take control of the second thing that will keep people awake at night is this now when i worked with all the rugby players I spent a lot of time teaching them a technique, a couple of techniques on how to deal with worry at night because they're lying there, they're worried about a big game, they're worried about injury, they're worried about relationships, they're worried about money, they're worried about all these things. So how to switch this off? So that that's important. The third thing is um, circadian disruption, we call it. So if you fly to a different time zone, uh, you don't have to worry about that. And then the fourth area is medical. Is actually if you have a medical condition that stops you sleeping or interferes with sleep. Don't need to go into those. I'm going to talk to you today about these because these are what you're going to start to take control of. So, first off, light. I mentioned circadian rhythm earlier on. So, you know, we are creatures that the sun rises, light enters the brain through the eyes, through the optic nerve, and it, it signals to a very specific part of our brain to get up and move. And then we produce cortisol and serotonin. So those chemicals are chemicals that get us up and going. And then later in the day, when darkness happens, uh, the serotonin that you've produced gets turned into melatonin, right? So light is like an external trigger for sleep. And it's one of the, it's, it's, they call it the master switch. Okay. So controlling light is hugely important. A strong light signal early in the day will send a strong signal to your body that it's time to move. It's time to get up and take action. And then as the day goes on, you want to try and reduce the amount of light. And then obviously when you're going to bed, darkness is best. Um, I'll talk about the phones in a second. It's a really good idea to get, an, to get an eye mask. Get an eye mask. It's something that will instantly improve sleep quality the first time you put it on. So, you know, again, all the rugby players, they've all eye masks, they've all earplugs, they've all that kind of stuff. They can be in a hotel for two days, unfamiliar, they need to sleep, they can't have interferences, interruptions, so they put on eye mask, earplugs, shut it out. Um, Caffeinated products, tea, coffee, and energy drinks, disastrous, right? Some people tell me, I have no problem getting to sleep after I 
drink whatever. Now, what caffeine does is it stops you going into the deep restorative sleep. So you're not getting the level of repair and restoration, even if you are asleep. It also interferes with your adrenal glands and your nervous system. Caffeine has a half-life of anywhere between five and eight hours, which means if you drink, I don't know, a can of uh, Monster or one of those ener energy drinks, you know, at two o'clock in the day, it's, it's the same as having a strong cup of coffee before you go to bed. It's still in your system, okay? So the general recommendation is not more than two to three cups, not after two to 3 p.m. You can look at the milligrams of, of caffeine. Caffeine, you know, caffeine has is used by sports guys, but they, they don't drink coffee or tea all week. And then an hour before the game or about an hour before the game, they might have, they'd have a, a, a caffeine chewing gum maybe to help with hand to eye coordination and stuff like that. Like, but it will mess up your sleep. Right, be careful. Food we talk about, but essentially too little or too much would interfere with sleep. Habits, massively important, guys. Massively important that you get into a good routine with, with uh, sleep. You can train yourself to sleep. It's as simple as that. We're, we're great with kids. We have a, a lovely routine of winding them down and pajamas and bedtime story and all that. Like, You have to develop a routine. Most people run around and then go, Christ, look at the time. I have to go to bed. And then what do you do? Can't sleep. Just I can't sleep. I just look at some cat videos on Facebook for two and a half hours. You're on TikTok, Instagram, whatever, you know, and all of a sudden it's two o'clock in the morning. You're going, oh, Jesus Christ. Now, the blue LED light in this device essentially shuts down, it shuts down melatonin production. So blue LED light is twice as powerful as natural sunlight at telling your brain to wake up, tells your brain to wake up. So it just shuts down the, the sleep neurotransmitter immediately. So one of the things I would say to you is go on brightness and display settings on your phone and program it in, uh, in on the iPhone, it's, it's, they call it night shift. So my, you can see my screen is kind of yellowish there a little bit. See my screen is kind of yellowish there a little bit. Um, because all the blue LED lights are shut out. Um, I'm not going to change how you bring, like, I know you all bring your phones to the bedroom. How you should be using it is for a podcast, for a meditation, for a body scan, right? US military train all their new recruits on how to fall asleep quickly because in the military, sleep is, re is regarded as a weapon and they report a 98% success rate after six weeks. So, Stop scrolling <laughs> and use it in a positive way. Um, heat, um, the colder your room, the better. Heat is another key trigger for sleep, you know. So shower an hour before bed will help cool the body down. So use we use all these things. Bed and bedroom should be associated with sleep. With sleep, it shouldn't be an entertainment zone. It shouldn't be full of entertainment and television and laptops and tablets and all that kind of stuff. You should be sleeping there. If you go to bed when you feel tired and sleep, um, don't go to bed dehydrated or over hungry. Don't overdose on coffee. Uh, awareness of breathing or visualization. So, like when I work with, say, someone like Jamie Heaslip, right? Those guys train hard. They train late in the evening sometimes, and they are switched on. So when you train, any of you train, you're in fight or flight. Your adrenaline, cortisol, noradrenaline, all those things are flowing through your system, right? And you're wired, you're hyped up. That's your sympathetic nervous system, okay? So how do those guys switch off their brain and their bodies and accelerate recovery? Well, how they do it is, there's three things that they do. One, a hot and cold shower. Hot shower and then a cold shower that vasodilates and constricts the blood vessels. So it pumps the metabolic buildup out of your system. Second thing to do is use food. So they eat, they make sure they have a good recovery meal, okay? Three to one carbohydrate to protein. And the third thing they do is they do a deep breathing. So what deep breathing does is it stimulates the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve runs from your brain down through your body to the different systems. And the vagus nerve is primarily associated with your parasympathetic, which is rest and recover. So you fight or flight and rest and recover. So the deep breathing. Now, this is especially useful if you wake up in the middle of the night. Because what do, what do you do when you wake up in the middle of the night, all of you? What do you do? 
first thing, check the time. Press the button on the phone, get absolutely blinded by the light, Jesus Christ. And then you do the calculation to, oh, do you like to get up in three hours? <laughs> and then you get stressed out. So instead what you do is go on YouTube, find a body scan and learn that. And then try it every night for 21 days or for two weeks, whatever it is, right? And you will put yourself straight back to sleep. That's important. The light, the temperature, the routine, again, all of these things are massively important. Um, anxiety, if you're worried, if you're stressed out, it's a good idea to have a notepad and pen by the bed, write it down. Just get it out of here, put it on paper, uh, and come up with an action plan the next day. People have insomnia, it's not a good idea to start taking tablets. Um, if people have insomnia, go to a doctor. Um, you know, I, I maybe recommend a magnesium supplement, very good for um, switching off a lot of those, you know, fight or flight mechanisms and help relax nerve impulse, so maybe a magnesium, vitamin D maybe. Um, you know, it's, it's the routine is massively important. Looking after all these other things, getting off the screens, switching the brain off, giving your mind time to sort of settle down before you go to bed. Light therapy is just in winter time if you're, worried, if you're not getting enough bright light. Um, so remember with sleep, you can train yourself to sleep. A lot of the barriers come when, when people say, oh, geez, I just, I, I can't sleep. Or they wake up and go, on oh, you, I'm awake again. You know, we get into these negative habits. Control the environment. That means the room, the temperature, the light, the sound. Control all the sensory stuff as well, that, you know, your earplugs and your eye mask. The psychological input, don't let your brain take off, write it down. The routine, make it part of your routine. And I want you to remember that what you do early in the day has much, just as much of an impact on your sleep as what you do mm -hmm. later in the day. Now, I'm nearly finished. I've got two or three slides left. So just how, how do you dovetail nutrition? Excuse me. Well, this simple principle of nutrition I teach anyway, quality, quantity, and timing. Good, qu good quality food at the right time in the right amount. Very important. Um, what do I mean by good quality food? Real food real food, uh, fruit, veg, uh, lean proteins, meats, whatever it is, you know, real food, quality food. Pills and powders are not going to fix a bad diet. Pills and powders are not going to turn you into an animal on the pitch. What is, is eating the highest quality food, and that means the leafy greens, that means the veg, that means all that kind of nutrient-dense stuff, okay, and getting the balance right in all those areas. Um, how do you dovetail sleep and nutrition? Um, what really facilitates recovery quickly is foods that are easy on your body and that are full of vitamins and minerals. What foods are full of vitamins and minerals? Veg, leafy greens, berries, these type of foods are, are excellent. Okay, so what you need to do is you need to look after the energy requirement, which are your, you know, your obviously your, your balance of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Um, but like having like having those other foods, the leafy greens and the berries and all that, they're they really help recovery and they help reduce inflammation. Case and shake a couple of hours before bed can really help with the muscle. Don't have a massive feed. Don't be eating huge feeds and go to bed. It's not going to do you any good. Foods high in tryptophan will help you sleep quicker. So tryptophan foods are dairy or cereals or proteins, lean proteins. Omega-3 fatty acids are found in nuts and seeds and things and fish and they help with reducing inflammation. So if guys are training a lot, uh, you might need to control inflammation. We need to control it, not to cut it out, because inflammation is part of the recovery process, but most people are over-inflamed. Food at night, you need, the reason you don't have massive amount of food and go to bed is because your gut bacteria have their own circadian rhythm and they help clean up your digestive system when you're asleep. So you need to, you need to be mindful of that. Um, I mentioned the inflammation, just the, 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 the protein, you know, from, from various sources, energy restoration, hormonal response, that's, I suppose, the testosterone and the cortisol and stuff like that. Um, brain repair, that will really help you with stuff. I think at the moment, a lot of people are suffering with weird dreams and vivid dreams. Um, this is down to the, to the COVID-19. Our daily routines are very limited so we've got very little information 
Um, so at night, your brain is, has little information to, to kind of uh, process. So that's why people are having weird dreams at the moment. Um, so if you are, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, psychological repair is, is important. You know, with this stuff, you're going to try and try again because you're going to fail. I always talk about failure because, like, the, the, they say that failure is the mother of success. I have failed more than, and I fail more than most people in different things. And I, and I always tell a story when I started. I started my business. I am from Mayo, lads, talking about failing and trying again. We're very good at that. Um, I started my business in Mayo about nine years ago, and when I did, I done a talk in my hometown, and I went to the local community centre. I advertised everywhere. I took an advert in the paper. I told all of my friends, come to my talk. Right. And then I went over the evening of my talk, and the guy said, Tom, how many chairs would I put out? And I said, probably 40. I'm expecting a big crowd. So I stood there waiting, and how many people came to my talk? Two. Two people. And it felt that evening, I can laugh at it now, but it felt like a horrible failure. The awful feeling in my stomach. And they came 10 minutes late and, you know, I gave them, I gave them my talk or whatever. Um, three and a half years later, or four years later, I was, I was standing in front of Conor McGregor, advising him at all his training sessions. I was finishing there and going over to meet Jamie Heaslip. Um, so, like, you know, my failure then was no indication of my future success. I'm, I'm in a lucky position now that I don't have to look for work, that it comes in the door to me. I get asked to contribute to press. I get asked to do projects. I get asked to work. You know, that's not, you know, that's just down to me trying and working my ass off. So, like, it's not, it's no accident that it happened, and it's, it's, it's taken a lot of time and energy. But, like, you know, don't let failure, failure is just, like, a part of your journey. So it's really important that you recognize that. You're going to encounter loads of it, so learn to deal with it and move on. Learn to learn to learn from it. So I'm just going to leave you, lads, with this um, action plan. Okay. Um, training you can, if you wish, consider circadian peaks, like you know, like testosterone levels, like coordination, like I, I would say the best time to train is probably even time probably five to six o'clock because just because you've got high testosterone in the morning. Your, your circulatory system, your muscular system isn't working at its best then. If that's working at its best in the evening time. So, you know, if you're going to pick a time, I mean, there's no bad time to train really, is there? Um, nutrition, get the timing right, get the quality food right. That That's better than any supplements. I guarantee you that. People are always looking for the magic bullet when it comes to nutrition. That's it. I've told you today what it is. Sleep, um, manage it sleep in 90 minute blocks so you're going to sleep for, for three hours four and a half hours six hours seven and a half hours nine hours so if you have to get up at six you should be in bed at half ten you should be sleep at half ten that's seven and a half hours that's five cycles plan them out like that look at it like that strategize you have a, have a recovery strategy for yourself you, i recognize the guys who, who who make it because they all of them do have these things right focus on what you can control write things down monitor and track even if it's very simple and then the last thing is reframe your thought process number one barrier i've i've came across with nutrition years working in nutrition and fatigue management and sleep the number one barrier is i ah, sure i couldn't be bothered doing that or i can't do that or i won't that won't work or whatever it may be you're always looking to to get better to improve and everything else so and that starts there in, in, in your head and your attitude really so uh, and your work rate and the, these things far out trump talent so um lads i hope you enjoyed the talk i hope you found it interesting and um i'll be very happy to take uh, questions now on kind of any aspect man thanks very much for that, that tom a really really interesting and I suppose it was uh, thought-provoking on a lot of things, but a, a lot of stuff, very simple. Um, it doesn't take a huge amount of change to get some of the things you're talking about. Uh, a few questions for you. So uh, first one, a couple came into me there. The night before big games, um, yeah. players would struggle, uh, might be a bit stressed about it. Uh, but sure. And they'd struggle. No, uh, I, I'm trying, I don't know, am I getting mixed up now that they're saying, I'm trying to think of what coaches used to say to us, that it's not the night before, it's the night, two nights before, is what you need to make sure you get a good sleep into you. 
Um, yeah. What's, what's the general? I think that's that's good advice because like, see the thing, the thing, the thing. If I analyze fatigue, and that's what I that's what I'm paid to do, right? If I analyze fatigue, I'd never look at one night. I'd always look at a week, ten days. You know, you'd certainly look at three or four or five nights. That like that's what you're looking at. You're not looking at because one one poor night. You know, one takeaway or one glass of wine or one whatever is not gonna. It's it's you look at you always look at a bigger picture. So with sleep, it's it's um it's the three four five nights before. Okay. You try and get decent sleep four or five nights or a week before the game, the big game or whatever it is. Then you know you can you can actually take it for granted. Actually, once you accept the fact that the night before you're going to, you're probably going to be awake. That actually helps most guys to, to actually fall asleep. To go, oh, well, look, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to stress about it because what can keep you awake is the stress worrying that you're not getting to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So yeah. uh, what I would say to you is, to, and this is where like top athletes, they're OCD. Like they have, they have a pattern for everything. And once you start to train, and allow, first of all, allow yourself that you may not sleep. That's fine. That's grand because you've actually slept a few nights before. So you're, you're going to be fine. No, those other things are not going to be impacted, right? Um, and the second thing is then um, just having that, that if you have the same routine every night, which you should have, you're going to bed at the same time, you, that should really help with, with the sleep. But, you know, don't worry, because like I'm, I was seeing with all these guys who were playing, some of them were playing for Ireland, like, and, and, and they couldn't sleep the night before. Yeah. You know, and it's, it's grand. It's not, it's, it's no biggie. It's, it's the three, four days before that you're, you're making sure of so bank, bank it away in a couple of days beforehand okay. yeah um very good next one i have um i think you have answered one of these already zinc you did zinc magnesium a good supplement to help with sleep quality um magnesium if if people really struggle i mean vitamin d you can, if you take vitamin d take it in the morning and if you take magnesium take it an hour before okay. those those are the two main supplements associated with sleep Okay, so vitamin E in the morning because it will act as a hormone and it's kind of, it can get you going a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, help with, you know, important for bone mineral density as well and mood and all that kind of stuff. So vitamin D in the morning, magnesium before. Certainly if you want to have a, a, a you know, a, one of these relaxing calm teas or whatever, that's grand as well. You know, all those, all those tiny little things can, can make the difference. Then if people really are struggling with sleep, then maybe talk to your doctor about a melatonin supplement. You can get a melatonin supplement. Now that, you know, I'll give you an example. You can get the same amount of melatonin in a handful of cherries or a handful of pistachio nuts. Okay. So it's not going to, it's not going to completely mess up your head. Like, you know. Okay. Yeah. As, as you get older, does sleep quality deteriorate? Yeah, it does. Because essentially the sort of biochemistry of it, like, the requirement actually remains the same. Now, a few things happen to sleep as you go through different ages. So. Am I right in saying as a teenager, I've, do I have teenagers, am I talking just a few teenagers here this evening? Um, I wouldn't say so, no, I'd say all coaches. All coaches, okay. Well, just, just to show you, give you an example, right? so, so like teenagers tend to go, um, they, you can't get them to bed, so they, they, have, a, they have the rate hour block and they, and they have something called a facial shift, so they tend to want to stay up later and go, to, and then they can't get them out of bed. As adults, what, what happens to us is our facial shift goes the other way, so our tendency is to fall asleep earlier and then wake up earlier, right? We, our, our, our brain's ability to sleep deteriorates because we're not, we become less efficient at breaking down particular proteins and building them back up from the melatonin and the, and the serotonin. So we become less, less able to sleep as, as time goes by. So that's why it's more important to really look after all the sleep hygiene stuff, you know, um, but yeah. Okay, that leads me to the next one then, that if an athlete, let's say, they get eight hours, does it matter what time they start or finish? So in other words, uh, if they go to bed at 10 o'clock and wake up at six o'clock, or if they go to bed at two o'clock in the morning and get up midday, does that make a difference? Uh, research would tell us that it doesn't make a huge difference. I know that people say, you know, the two hours before 12 is better than this kind of yeah. myth about kind of sleep, you know. Um, that's to do with the darkness. That's to do with the you know the level of light. So the darker, like you, you, you were exceptionally sensitive to light. Except mm -hmm. you know yourself, mm -hmm. one crack in the curtain. Yeah, it could take an hour or two off your sleep. So we're, we're very sensitive. So the idea of the the bed before midnight was to get to sleep early if you can. That nearly guarantees your sleep. But like 
it shouldn't matter as long as your eight hours isn't too far out of that those windows like if you're strict about it it's it, it, it doesn't really matter but like light is light is important for our health in many different ways so getting bright light early in the day is very important and we know now it impacts things like alzheimer's disease and um, multiple sclerosis and stuff like that so so those you know keeping the eight hours within a certain parameters fine if you want to go to bed at 12 or one o'clock and get up at nine or ten that's fine no problem okay. so I'm just getting to quality sleep and just on that then i'd imagine that same as what we're saying a routine of like if you're going to bed at 12 o'clock every night yeah it's better than going to bed at 12 o'clock tonight 10 o'clock tomorrow night two o'clock the night after having a, yeah. a routine would be the best way to do it oh absolutely it's 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 called queuing control you actually train yourself to to to, I do this and then this happens and then this happens you get the because then you know what the outcomes are going to be right so like we like one if you know I give the top 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 five tips on sleep then that's one of them is always like that routine is, is, is the same time and you know what you, your brain loves that like and, and you know already that if generally if we were working or whatever nine to five that's why you bloody wake up on Saturday morning at the same time because your brain is trained that way because yeah. you've trained it to be that way so our brain loves those patterns and will respond well to them. Okay, that leads me into the next question. Um, advice for amateur players who are shift workers regarding sleep, nutrition, hydration. So like as I said, I'm just thinking yeah. my, my brother-in-law lives across the road. He'd, um, he does four nights on um, and then he do four days, whatever, four days later. So he's, his routine differs every eight days. Yeah, um, so that's like, you're, you're talking circadian disruption here. So like... What I'm not sure what shift that? pattern he's on. It could be 24-7 or kind yeah, of... Yeah, let's say, let's say just go to the night, night day shift. Let's say he works 7 to 7 or 7 to so like you're, 7. Yeah, if you're doing start, like, like... What things like, can he do? So what, 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 he, what can he do, is it? Yeah, like what things can he do? Just what little yeah. things can he do to help him? So like, I look at... Say, say look at the food for... Like, see, there's general kind of rules around it, right? Or recommendation, not rules, recommendations, right? So like, generally speaking, depending on how many nights he has over the course of his cycle um, we want to avoid meals between 12 midnight and 6 a.m because your digestive system is working at its worst at 12 o'clock at night and it's at its best at 12 o'clock in the day so if he's on a rotating pattern where he has two nights or whatever else he's better off and um, eating his meat, main meal before he goes into work so if he's on a 12 hour if, if he's on a 12 hour then get up at whatever time um, Try and get a good night's sleep, right? Then get up, have your br probably brunch because you're probably going to be getting up at twelve or one o'clock in the day. Uh, then have an evening meal at five or six o'clock. That's your good dinner, and then have um, light food or snacks, and then no food. Generally, you're better off. Like in the research that I've read and the research that has been carried out, generally the people who find less hunger and more balanced energy are the ones that kind of have their calories all before twelve, and then just stop eating. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, now what can he do in terms of his sleep? What he need, really needs to do is look after those days. He's got his two or three or four days off. That's key time. That's crucial for him that he really tries to catch up, not catch up, but like if he's missed out on sleep in those other nights, you know, one of the tricks he can do for to biohack his, his brain is that if he's on nights, get uh, try and get a nap before you go into your night. So try and have a nap and then go outside and get bright light and your brain thinks it's morning. And then that will help with energy levels throughout the night shift. Like it's really tough on those guys who are on the rotating shift patterns who are doing two days, two nights, four days off, or whatever else. Yeah. It's it's it becomes more important that they look after their sleep and their food because they're more likely to put on weight and lose muscle and energy fluctuations and stuff like that. Okay. Tom, I'd say that's it. I don't have any questions. Just a lot of compliments there to you. Um, you probably see them in the chat yourself. Um, Patrick, Which is no, where are all the compliments? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll screenshot them for you. Um, Pat, Pat has just wondered about a, a nutrition webinar. Yeah, Pat, we'll probably get to that in the next uh, six to eight weeks. We've kind of got the next six weeks planned out already so we'll try to fit that in at some stage after that um tom other than that i just want to say thanks very much for your, for your time you've been very very good to help us tonight um to give us just that information as i said it's a probably a topic that underutilized within the ga as i said uh, when i was talking to you beforehand a lot of coaches are x and o's um what happens between the white lines but it's you know uh, yeah. as you mentioned there's 47 hours between when they finish training on a tuesday and they come back on a thursday 
um, and how they, what they do in that time is, is crucially important. So, um, yeah. a lot taken out of it, as I said, for everybody. Good. As I said, if the same thing we say for everybody, if you can get two or three things out of every workshop, um, that, that's the main thing. But uh, there's a lot, lot more than that there tonight. So, we might come back to you in the future, maybe. Um, but as I said, thanks very much for, for your input tonight. Okay. Lovely. My pleasure. It's, good, it's great, to, great to see you again and um, great to touch base. And if you need that and look, um, I'll try and forward on some notes or some interesting bits for you guys. And you can always contact me, uh, tomcoleman.ie on Instagram. I have a new website on the way. Um, I'm fairly easy to find if you just Google me anyway. So um, thanks very much and just look, the best of luck to you all with it. Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll tag your tag the Instagram page and the, and the tweet and I'll try to get that information up. I'll email that out to the, the slides when I can get them from Tom. I'll email them out as a PDF to everybody. Um, so thanks very much, Tom. Lovely. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys.